local and wide area networks, our lab. There are two things that you have to focus on at this stage, show commands and basic router configuration. We'll start with some show commands. I will show you everything, connect to a network device and talk you through everything that you can see on your screen. I know a lot, but it's not complicated. You will keep using these commands. You don't have to memorize everything. It's more than enough to understand what I am talking about. So the first command is running config and startup config. If you want to configure a Cisco device, there are two config files, running config and startup config. The running config file is everything that you're doing at the moment. For instance, if I say hostname r2, that's my running config. I have not saved that yet. If I want to keep my configuration, I say copy from running config to startup config. This means that when I reboot my device, I will keep all configuration. Does that make sense? I will keep everything that I've configured already. When I say hostname r3, that will change in my running config, not in my startup config. When I type show running config, you will see that my hostname is r3. When I type show startup config, you will see that my hostname is r2. Show CDP neighbors. CDP stands for Cisco Discovery Protocol. CDP allows you to verify if you have a directly connected Cisco device. CDP works at layer 2, is Cisco proprietary, there is LLDP as well, which is open standard. I don't have anything over here, but I have our next lab here. I will grab a crossover cable. Here we go. Show CDP neighbors. Let's wait a moment. You have to make sure the port is in green. Here we go. Switch G02. How can you read this line? When I follow my local interface G02, I will go to switch, which is 2960, and my remote port, the port on the other end is G02. You can say detail to learn more about your remote device. You can even check the IP address of your remote device. Show IP interface brief. You've seen this command already. Show IP interface brief allows you to verify IP addresses. Show interfaces. You can say, for instance, G0. Allows you to verify your IP address as well. On the other hand, you can see more information. You can see your subnet mask. You can see MTU, maximum transmission unit which is 1500 bytes by default in a local area network. You can see that it's full duplex, 100 megabits per second, and some stats. You can see that we have had almost 400 broadcast messages. Show version, a really cool command that allows you to verify what you want to know about your router, your switch, your access point. We can see our uptime. I can see that my router has been up and running for more than one day. The iOS I'm using. I can see memory available, port information. And here is my configuration register number. You can modify this number if you want to recover your password, you change it to 2142. Your router will ignore the startup config and allow you to recover your password. There is a special procedure for that. 
you go to something that is called a rombon mode and you can recover your password. This one is really cool if you want to check PID, product ID. If you have a support contract with Cisco, if you want to upgrade your router, if you want to buy something similar, everybody will ask for a PID, product ID. You might need a serial number sometimes as well. Show protocols. This command is very similar to show IP interface brief. Show IP protocols, on the other hand, is used when you have a dynamic routing protocol. We'll use it a lot when we talk about OSPF. Show clock. That's easy. You can verify your date and time settings. You can set it here. Clock set. Show flash. Show flash allows you to verify what files are available on your router. In most cases, you will find your operating system and iOS in flash. Show IP root, that's your routing table. Finally, show ARP allows you to verify your ARP cache. In Windows, it's ARP A. On a Cisco device, you use the show ARP command. Okay, that's great. Now, here is what I recommend you play with at home. You have one router, one switch, one end device. Your goal is to make sure that you can telnet from PC0 to router 0. Telnet allows you to manage your network device remotely. I strongly recommend you configure telnet at this stage. Hostname. IP address. I can see it is 192.168.1.1. No shut. If I want to configure Telnet, I can use a local database. I need a username and password for it. I say username admin, privilege 15, password Cisco. Privilege 15 means it's like the highest level. You can do whatever you want on this device. Finally, you say line vty from 0 to 15 login local please be so nice and allow this local username and password do i have to configure anything on my switch i don't that's a good thing because even a cisco switch is a plug and play device so in theory when i go to my end device I say it is 192.168.1.3. Do I need a default gateway? No, I don't. I am in a local network. Yes, I can ping it. Can I telnet to it? Yes, I can. Awesome, and I am in the privileged mode, privileged 15. Now I can go to the global configuration mode and do whatever I want. When you think about a switch, you assign an IP address using a switched virtual interface. We will talk about that later on. For the time being, please make sure that you assign an IP address using interface VLAN 1. VLANs allow you to group ports, so in a way you are going to assign an IP address to all interfaces on that switch. That should be enough to ping my neighbors. Okay. 
no shot required. Yes, it is. Okay? When things go wrong, I keep recording. This interface is shut down, so I have to go back, interface VLAN 1, and type no shut. Here we go. Now I can ping my router. I can ping my PC.